In this video, I want to cover the conjugate gradient method, um, which speeds up image reconstruction compared to when using methods like steepest descent. So with steepest descent, uh, we've previously seen um, that you search in the direction of the gradient, um, and then you minimize the cost function in that search direction. Um, and you know you've minimized it by the fact that when you arrive at a new estimate, the gradient there should be orthogonal to the original search direction. So that all sounds great, but what happens is, like shown here, you get a kind of zigzagging um, multiple steps towards the solution. So it can be quite inefficient. Many different gradients need to be recalculated and you get there eventually, but not as efficiently as the method we will now be looking at, conjugate gradient, which rather neatly starts off the same as the steepest descent method, optimizes in that direction, but when we're now at that new position, instead of just calculating the gradient and going off in that direction, it now considers the gradient there in combination with the previous search direction. So we end up with this kind of composite search direction made up of the gradient at the new position and the previous search direction. Taking those two, in other words, gamma zero plus gamma one in this example, and then optimizing um, to minimize the cost function neatly takes us directly to that minimum of this cost function, the quadratic programming uh, cost function, basically least squares. Uh, it takes us there in just two steps. Very, very efficient. So let's uh, see that again, but this time mathematically. We're starting off with position theta zero, that's our reconstructed image. And we've got initial search direction, which is just the gradient of that position. Um, then what we do is we get to the new position by adding a search direction with some scalar step size on that search direction. Um, that's what we add on to our current estimate to get to the new position. And initially, um, the search direction is gamma zero, it's just, just the gradient. So the first step of conjugate gradient is the same as steepest descent. Just take the gradient and minimize the cost function um, along that search direction. But from then on, uh, we now take on this new composite method. So in general then, at any iteration k, we now have a general search direction, which is not just the gradient, but you can see it does have the gradient, a general search direction at iteration k. It's got the gradient plus some scalar amount of the previous search direction. And so in this video, we'll be going into how to find that amount beta k of that previous search direction. And you can see the answer is already given here, but we'll see how we arrive at that. And then the step size for a given search direction is exactly the same uh, calculation as what is done for steepest uh, descent. Of course, though, you've got to now take into account that uh, you've just got some general new search direction. So the calculation of alpha, as I say, it's very obvious. And in fact, we will go through it in this video. Okay, so how are we gonna tackle that problem? Well, I'm just gonna make it really simple here and say, well, okay, the solution, the, the minimum of the least squares or quadratic programming cost function is given by the initial estimate plus just the error. In other words, the error is the solution minus our starting point. And of course, you can immediately see, therefore, um, theta QP, the solution is just equal to the solution because the initial estimate just cancels out. Very simple expression. Now this is where it's gonna get a bit more subtle. What we're gonna do is call that discrepancy there an error vector. And what I'm gonna do is just express it as a sum of search directions, okay? Showing it's a finite number of search directions that are gonna be added on to our initial estimate to get us to the solution. So it's like a series expansion. It's just a summation of images because these search directions are in themselves images. So endpoint is initial image plus a collection of other images with different coefficients or step sizes, um, scale factors, if you like. Okay, um, furthermore, we're gonna now say, what if those search directions are orthogonal vectors? Well, um, that would be very useful because it suddenly becomes quite simple to find the coefficient for any particular search direction. You know, if we're all familiar with Fourier and orthogonality and how you find Fourier coefficients, well, it's exactly the same kind of approach here. We're saying that um, if you wanna find um, coefficient alpha k for search direction dk, 
then all we need to do is just do a scalar product with that search direction dk, because if we do that here, um, that will be a zero result for all the other search directions other than dk. Um, so that's going to simplify in the next uh, slide. Uh, but meanwhile, of course, we've got to do that same dk transpose here, here, as well as here. And the whole reason for doing it was for here to just filter out that single step size dk, knowing all the other terms will get zero rise because they're orthogonal and so will give a zero result. It's only when d gets multiplied by itself in scalar product that you get a finite result. Okay, um, so what if we do have an orthogonal set of vectors uh, di? Um, then this is going to be the result. Okay, remember before we had this summation, the whole point of orthogonality is that D, dk transpose is going to pick out just dk. All the others are going to give a zero result. Okay, so that's just a rewriting of that previous expression uh, with the effective impact of uh, dk and, orthogonal and orthogonality. So we can rearrange that um, to solve for alpha k. Uh, so what I've done here is just uh, put... Uh, the solution point there, theta qp minus the initial estimate, just carry that over there, factored out the search direction dk transpose, and then divided by uh, this expression here to then indeed localize to just give us the alpha k, the coefficient, um, the step size for search direction dk. Okay, um, and now rewriting that again, just recognizing that again, that that was our error vector that we talked about originally. So that gives us uh, the step size for search direction dk. But of course, we all know there are big issues with this expression. First of all, we don't even know the solution, so how on earth can we find theta e? Problem number one. Problem number two, uh, where are we getting these orthogonal vectors from? So let's deal with those concerns right now. Okay, first problem was we don't know the solution. So what we do is we take that expression that we started out with. Uh, remember what we did? We did the, um, you know, the expression of that as a summation of orthogonal search directions. Well, what we're going to do now is just apply the matrix H to every single term. Okay, so that's going to be H theta QP there, H theta zero plus H times that error. Right, why are we doing that? Well, the key point is that we now know h times the solution, okay? Because we're claiming that h times where we want to be is going to be equal to the measured data vector g. So it's like we're transforming to the domain of the measurement where we do know what we measured, okay? We don't know the solution, but we do know what we measured. And so we'd expect the solution that's to be consistent with that measured data vector g. Okay, so let's again follow the same rationale. We're going to express this now as a summation of search directions. Um, um, so alpha times some search direction. But because of that transform to the data space, we've now got the matrix H that has now come in in front of those um, orthogonal vectors. Okay, we're expressing this that the error image as orthogonal vectors d with coefficients alpha and because of h uh, being there, it has to stay in front of those search directions. And of course, over here, it's just as we had before. Okay, so following through similar reasoning to before uh, in the previous uh, slide, um, we end up with this expression here, and we just recognize that uh, g minus h theta zero, I refer you to the video on steepest descent to show that that is none other than the gradient at theta zero, but obviously with a negative because the gradient was h theta minus g, so this is the negative gradient. And now we see that h has uh, crept in here compared to what we saw in the previous slide. Okay, so that now only holds this, this um, orthogonalization, um, in other words, the elimination of all those other summations, all the other terms, all the other search directions, this will only hold now if these uh, search um, directions d are now h orthogonal, okay? Because when we multiply, imagine we're trying to find dk here, so we're doing dk transpose times this with a view to all the others going to zero, okay? And um, that's only going to be true if dk 
is what's known as H orthogonal to all the others. And that means that when you put the others through matrix H and then multiply them by a search direction D, that needs to give zero. So normally with orthogonality, we'd say, you know, uh, vector D1 transpose vector D2 equals zero. That's regular orthogonality. H orthogonality means, well, H times D2, and then when you do D1 transpose on H times D2, that is what needs to equal zero. So you just got that kind of matrix H sitting in the middle there, um, and that's how we define H orthogonality. Okay, and so that's going to be crucial because we've had to transform to the data space in order to express this error image in terms of something that we know, the measured data. Okay, um, so we've got to find uh, the vectors that fulfill that uh, H orthogonality requirement. And, um, and remember before with steepest descent, this is just pointing out what we already know, um, the search direction was simply the gradient vector zigzagging towards the solution. So as we know with conjugate gradient, a better approach then is to use a search direction um, that's not only orthogonal to the previous direction, um, but in fact to all the other previous search direction vectors. The idea here with conjugate gradient is not to undo all the work of the previous um, directions, uh, the search directions, because that is what, you know, the zigzag of steepest descent is kind of very wasteful. It's like you're kind of uh, undoing what you previously had done in a particular search direction. That's why it takes so long. Okay, so what we're saying then is um, uh, with steepest descent, we know we start out with a search direction d0, which is, which is just the gradient at the initial estimate theta0, and we know the gradient is h theta0 minus the measured data g. Okay, we've already established that. And then as we know, um, we get to the next um, estimate by taking in the current estimate plus some step size times the search direction. So this is all just very much revision on this slide. Okay, and as we've seen before, um, alpha, okay, we find that just by requiring, requiring that the gradient at the new estimate theta one be orthogonal to that search direction d zero. Um, and so again, I refer you to what we've already covered in the previous video on steepest descent to calculate that step size. So all of that we've done so far here is should be routine if you're familiar with steepest descent. Okay, um, and then as we know, um, we can get the gradient at the new position, and that's just gonna be the standard definition of the gradient, it's h theta one minus g, nothing new there. However, and this is where things now become different with conjugate gradient, okay? We're no longer saying theta two is equal to theta one plus alpha one gamma one, which is what steepest descent would have said. Now we're saying, no, 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 theta two is equal to theta one plus alpha one D one, where D one is a new direction, search direction vector um, that basically uh, takes into account both gamma one and the previous direction gamma zero. So this is gonna be the secret ingredient to uh, conjugate gradient is using this composite of search directions. Okay, so we do want this composite direction D1, and it's gonna be the gradient at the new position plus some step amount of the previous direction D0, okay? And so the rationale there is that use our previous hard work in calculating that search direction D0 um, in addition to using the gradient at the new location. Okay, so we know we've got the gradient, that's easy to calculate. Uh, we know we have the previous direction D0, that's obvious. You know, so with steepest descent, that was just the gradient. And then we get to the new position, we, we can find gamma one, that's just regular steepest descent. Um, and, and then we've got this idea of um, the new direction being this composite. And so the only unknown here is how much of the previous direction to use. And as we've just discussed, we need this new direction to be H orthogonal to D0 and all the, I mean, in this case, it's just to D0, but in general, DK would need to be H orthogonal to D0 and all the other direction vectors, okay? Um, so here, in this context, D1 needs to be H orthogonal to D0 and all the future uh, direction vectors as well, okay? Because why do we want to do that? Well, because that's what gives us this very easy calculation of the step size alpha. That's the beauty of this H orthogonality. Okay, um, so we're going to be designing D1 
so that it is h orthogonal to all the other direction vectors. That is the plan. So let's write this out then. So if we, if we want this, um, okay, let's just keep this simple. We've just done one step. Maybe that'd be like gamma zero, with steepest descent. Uh, and then we've got gamma one at the new position and we've got this hybrid composite direction D1. And we want it to be h orthogonal to the previous search direction D0. That's gonna need the following to be true. So remember for h orthogonality, what we need is this matrix H in between, in the middle of that scalar product, if you like. So taking this expression, um, we're just gonna do um, H orthogonality with it. So this needs to be um, H orthogonal to D0. So that means D1 transpose with HD0, okay? Um, that needs to correspond to just by plugging in this HD0 throughout all the terms. So we've got gamma one transpose HD0 and then beta one D transpose H um, D zero. We, we need um, this expression um, to equal zero because um, yeah, we want H orthogonality and by definition H orthogonality means that expression D one transpose H D zero needs to equal zero. That's what H orthogonality means. Okay, so it leaves us with this expression on the right hand side needs to equal zero, and so we can directly now solve for beta one just by rearranging the terms, and we get the expression for beta one. And so that would be, um, if you like, in the early stages, this D zero would be gamma zero, H, and then uh, gamma zero transpose here, gamma zero here, H there, and gamma one. So very easy to calculate what that beta one would be um, in building up this composite search direction D1. Okay, so that allows us now to merrily get on with the next update. Theta 2 is now theta 1 plus that composite direction with step size alpha 1. Okay, um, and then you know, we're in the very familiar territory of the kind of calculations that we've done before uh, for steepest descent because basically we're now saying we've got a search direction D1. If you look back at my steepest descent video, I did use a general vector D. Um, so this is where it's now useful. Um, and we can just solve this very easily by requiring, of course, the, the gradient to be orthogonal um, to the search direction um, D1. Okay, so when we arrive at, uh, as it says here, we require the gradient at the new location theta2 to be orthogonal um, to that search direction D1. Although, of course, now that D1 is that composite, clever search direction. But the calculation of alpha 1 here is very elementary. It's just what we've done with steepest descent. Um, it's just that we've now got that new direction in there. Um, and so that then um, can be, if you like, extrapolated to the general update. Theta k plus 1 is equal to theta k plus alpha k general direction dk where that general direction is this composite of the gradient plus some step size of the previous search direction. So that is the genius of the conjugate gradient method. Again, summarized here, basically you start out by doing steepest descent. You just uh, use the gradient at the initial estimate theta zero, plug that in as the search direction, solve for alpha as you would for steepest descent. But then in general, from step one onwards, you now calculate this composite, which is the, the gradient of the current position plus some amount of the previous search direction. We've shown H orthogonality allows us to get um, that amount of the previous direction to build in with the current gradient to get you that hybrid composite direction. And then the alpha part here in the main update is just directly analogous to what we do for steepest descent except, of course, it's now using this general direction D rather than the gradient. So that's all I wanted to say on conjugate gradient. Um, you know, I suggest you go off and implement it. It's obviously a, a quite an efficient method, um, certainly faster than steepest descent. Thank you for listening.